Hey up everybody and welcome back to the Just The Driven YouTube channel. My name is Josh Bridges and today we're going to be speaking about the Mark 8 Golf R. Now Volkswagen have been relatively secretive about the Mark 8 up until around a couple of weeks ago when we've seen a fair few photos, quite a few videos and of course the German configurator that has come to light over the last week or so. So we're going to be weighing in and speaking about what our thoughts are on this particular car. Of course we've got a, a bit of a vested interest in this given that we've owned a Mark 7 in the past so I'm always going to be interested in the new model. But let's get straight into the video and let's speak about the Mark 8 Golf R. Hey up everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you've just heard from that little bit of an intro there, we are going to be speaking about the Mark 8 Golf R. Probably one of the most anticipated cars to come out in terms of hot hatches, but Volkswagen, as I've already said, have been a little bit secretive about the specs, about the way the car looks. Of course, they've been doing some Nürburgring testing. But over the last couple of weeks, there's been a couple of photos and videos and interesting information that's come out that gives us a bit more information to be able to build a picture of how much it's going to be, what the power is going to be like, what the car is going to look like, and ultimately, if people are going to enjoy it. Now, I just want to draw your attention to a Facebook post that the official Volkswagen page put out on their page around three days ago. Probably more like a week by the time you guys see this, but you can hop on straight into the Facebook page, and I'll even put a link down in the description so you can go and see this video. So we see the Mark 8 driving along some mountain roads. We also see it drifting, which I'll speak about in a little while, but it gives us a really good idea of what the Mark 8 Golf R is going to look like. Now, I stand with the vast majority of people in the sense of, I like the way the back looks, I like the way the rear quarter Waters look it looks really aggressive from certain angles especially when you can see the diffuser and um, we've got a new spoiler in there as well which has a little bit of a gap I'm guessing that is for aerodynamics as well and I'm also guessing that there's going to be no Ertinger replica spoilers now Ertinger may well bring out another spoiler for the Mark 8 Golf R which will be slightly different but Volkswagen have given us that little bit of a gap in the middle albeit without the post down the center and I know some of you guys really really hate the replica stuff so that's probably music to your ears. Where things start to go slightly the downhill is the side profile and the front of the car for me. The side profile, it looks a little bit too chunky. It looks like there's not enough window there. I don't know exactly how to describe it. I just prefer the side profile of the Mark 7. The front of the car, I really, really like these new headlights. I like the new design they've got going on, albeit they're a little bit shorter than what we would have expected them to be. But they've got nice gloss black highlights going all the way along the front grille. And it just ties everything in fairly nicely. But there's one thing that we've got to take into account here is that the Mark 8 Golf R is based on a family hatchback. It's not going to look wildly aggressive is not going to look like the Civic Type R Volkswagen have not got that sort of MO when it comes to how aggressive their cars are going to be but what they can do is they can take a relatively good package which is a Mark 8 Golf and add some spiciness, add some aerodynamics, add some you know diffusers and aggressive bits. And that's where we get the all-wheel drive hot hatch that we all love. Now, we're going to get into the juicy stuff. So I just want to rewind a little bit and play back a certain portion of that video that Volkswagen put out on their Facebook page, where the Golf R was drifting. Now, as we all know, the Golf R does have the EA AAA engine, albeit a Gen 3 version. So there's going to be some improvements and slight part changes over the outgoing Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 engines. However, it still does have the Haldex system. Now, Volkswagen have come out and said that the Mark 8 Golf R is going to be available with a drift mode. Now, this drift mode, I believe, is going to be an optional extra alongside the Nürburgring mode as well, which we'll talk about when we talk about the configurator a little bit later on. But just take a look at this clip. So, you've got the Golf R on a track, a wet track, bearing in mind, going sideways. Now, I've always said that if you can change the Haldex system to give more power to the rear than it does to the front, the Golf R will be a much more engaging and fun car to drive. And that's part of the reason why I sold mine. It was a little bit too boring, it was too point and squirt, and I guess some people will agree with me and some people will disagree with me, but I think that the drift mode is going to be a fantastic addition to the Mark 8. Now there's been a couple of questions raised from watching this video here. Of course it is on a wet track. Is it only going to work on a wet track? Are you going to be able to customize the amount of bias that you're going to put to the rear wheels? Say if somebody is more experienced with rear wheel drive, will they be able to put 90% to the back and 10% to the front? Or is it going to be a fixed amount such as 70-30? So it'll allow you to get out to a certain degree, but once it detects a little bit more slip, 
it'll sort of snap you back in and away you go. Either which way, I think it's going to be a great addition to the car and one of the reasons why I actually sold my Mark 7 back, you know, a year and a half ago now was because it was a little bit too boring it was too clinical it was too point and square now you make it so the car can then change it up a little bit put more power to the rear and you can have some fun in it you can have some fun at tracks it's arguably going to be quicker around a track if you can put more power to the rear because it'll allow the car to turn a little bit more and not only that but you're able to go sideways and drift in what is arguably a family hatchback now that to me sounds like a great little composition for a very very fun car uh, but what isn't fun is the price and that's what we're going to speak about now. So some people have seen that you can go online onto the German Configurator website and go build your own Mark 8 Golf R. Now if you can find a link to that I will leave one down in the description for you guys to go and have a look at. But I'm just going to pull my phone out now to tell you just how much a relatively well specced Mark 8 Golf R would cost me in euros. So we've got here a summary. It's a Golf R 2 litre TSI OPF 4 motion 320 PS, 7 speed dual clutch DSG gearbox. Now the car in itself is 48,018 euros. That is incredibly high. That is without optional extras. Now with the special equipment, including that, it comes to 12,087 euros, leaving a total price of 60,100 euros. This is for a family hatchback, 60,000 euros, which off the top of my head roughly equates to what, maybe 53, 54,000 pound. That's a lot of money for a Golf. That's a lot of money for a car in general. Never mind something which is a small four door family hatchback with a little bit of spiciness added in there. So 60,000 euros for the new Golf R, my mind was blown when I saw that. And that is not even the highest price you can get it to. One of the guys in the Mark 7 Golf R owners group actually specced one up fully. So every single option ticked, every single premium option ticked as well. And the price came to something like 69,000 euros. That's knocking on the door of 59,000 or 60,000 pounds for a Golf. Now, I don't know about you, but I definitely wouldn't be paying 60 grand for a Golf. There's an absolute myriad of cars used or even new that you can pick up for cheaper that are arguably a better car. Now, yes, granted, the new car has a fantastic interior. It's got a great look about it. It's brand new technology. It's got a drift mode. It's got a Nürburgring mode. However, would you pay £60,000 for that? I do not think so. Now, I'm quite keen to hear what your thoughts are. Now, of course, a lot of my viewership has come from the Mark 7 Golf R. I still get a lot of views on the Mark 7 Golf R videos even today. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on the Mark 8. Either the way it looks, the way it performs with the 320 PS engine, or even the price, because that price absolutely blew my mind. As I mentioned earlier, you can find a link to the Facebook post from Volkswagen down in the description. You can also find a link to the configurator down in the description. And remember, if you have enjoyed this video and you want me to weigh in a little bit more on the Mark 8 Golf R, as and when we get some more information, then remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep up to date with what we're doing, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. I genuinely cannot even fathom how much this Mark 8 Golf R is going to cost. £60,000, £54,000, £53,000, however much you look at it, it's just too much. It's way, way, way too much for a four-door hatchback. And on top of that, here in the UK, you've got extra tax to pay for the first five years because the car is going to be over the £40,000 list price. And that's if the tax bans don't change between now and the release of the car in March 2021. I just cannot get my head around how much this car is going to cost for a Golf. This is for a Golf. €60,000 for a Golf.